So I'm doing a series, and we've been doing about eight talks on it. And, and the, the talks are about finding. Because I think our, one of our biggest jobs as a spiritual being is unpacking all that God has placed within our soul. Because for most of us, we've spent most of our life looking outside of ourselves for answers, for things, for our needs to be met, for life to work. And, and we've been so focused on the external that only occasionally do we really take a deep look within. And, and I want us to look within over this series. And I want us to find how much God has placed in every soul. Because I think we're truly blown away, and that's a spiritual term. I think, I think Moses used it in the, in, in the promised land, on the way to the promised land. I, I, think, I think we'll be blown away by how much is actually in your soul. Because if you were created, if, it tr if it's true that you were created in the image and likeness of God, then the fullness of God has to be within you. And today, I want us to look at finding simplicity. You know, I began with the idea of finding your power, finding peace. Last week, we talked about finding beauty. And today, I want to talk about finding simplicity because I think there is such a, a journey that we take with simplicity. I think our ego tries to make things as complicated as possible to justify our intellect. See, if everything is simple, what's our brain, what's our mind going to do? But if we keep things busy and complicated and hard, and then, then there's always something that our mind is working on to fix or to solve. But what if our true spiritual destiny and purpose is found in grace and ease. What if grace and ease is our spiritual path? And we, and we can argue about it, or we can just let grace and ease be in charge of our life. So here we go. You ready? How many of you would wear the same outfit, the same style, the same look, day after the day after day after day? I would. Like, if I was a doctor... I would only be in scrubs. And I'd wear the same, not maybe not the exact same ones, but I'd have the same, I'd have 30 pair of the same colored scrubs, and literally that would be all I would wear. How many of you know, know that Mark Zuckerberg, the, the founder of, of Facebook, wears pretty much exactly the same outfit day after day after day? The same, t the t-shirt, jeans, and hoodie, right? And he's got it down. It's his look. It's iconic. It's his look. Barack Obama, when he was president, had two color suits. When he tried to go for a third one, people just went nuts. He either wore a dark gray or a dark blue suit, and that was it. He said, I have to make so many decisions that on a daily basis, I am not going to decide what I'm going to eat or how I'm going to dress. Because all those decisions then were off the table. Like, I get it, right? Simon Cowell... The, the, has the same look. He wears over and over again. Tom Ford, the designer, famous for men's suits. Tom Ford wears the same suit over and over again. If he wants creativity, he takes off the tie. Wow! Right? Like, that's how exciting it gets. It's the same suit, with or without. Change the shirt, take off the tie. It's the same look. Giorgio Armani. He, he, the only thing he ever wears. Now, these are designers. These are people that are making their living from fashion that wear the same clothes every day. Giorgio Armani, navy blue slacks, cashmere sweater. Well, that's what he wears day after day after day. I get it. Like, if I didn't think people were going to have a tizzy, I'd wear the same outfit every day. Michael Kors, black suit, black T-shirt, black sunglasses every day. What am I going to wear today? I bet I'm going to wear a black suit, black t-shirt, and black sunglasses. Right? How simple is that? The Dalai Lama, same outfit every day. 
right? It's the same outfit. And, and I want you to see how many of you could see that if every day you went into your closet and there were 10, whatever, five, eight, same t-shirt, same slacks, same hoodie would go, I guess I'm going to wear those slacks, that t-shirt, and that hoodie. And, and that, that decision's over. Like, you're, you're absolutely able to move the decision-making metrics in your life to a much higher ground if you're not standing in front of your closet thinking, what am I going to wear today? How many of you know that you spend more than 30 seconds in front of your closet asking yourself that question, what am I going to wear today? I have to ask myself, and what did I wear last Wednesday so I make sure I don't wear the same outfit week after week after week? If I was in green scrubs every day, what's he gonna wear? I bet he's gonna wear green scrubs. I would be in the same outfit day after day after day. And if I wanted to be wild, I'd wear a different colored tenny. <laughs> right? Fashion statement, right? But I'd wear the same thing. The, the, Joshua D Becker wrote an article, Eight Reasons Successful People Wear the Same Clothes Every Day. Fewer decisions. Successful people have decision fatigue. They waste, they waste less energy every day deciding on what they're going to wear. This author writes about the project, what it's called Project 333. And it's a personal challenge to, wear, to, to limit your closet to 33 items and you commit to those 33 items for three months. 33 items for three months, and that's what you wear. How many of us would have just a nervous breakdown if, that, if that's what we had to do, right? 33 items for three months, that's all you get to wear. I, 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 like, I'd be like, do they count socks? Do sound socks count? Do shoes count? Like, do underwear count? How many, like, 33, that's all I get for the next three months? I think most of us would panic, right? <laughs> one of the article, one of the, the people that they talked to is a mother from Dallas. And she decided that she was going to wear the similar uniform every day and minimize her wardrobe. She said, I have never felt so put together. She said, I know that everything in my closet fits. I know that I look great in everything in my closet, and I have about five outfits. And, and you know, if you've ever been to Europe, especially Italy, like the Italians wear beautiful clothes, but they don't have a closet full of them. They have two or three outfits that are beautiful. And, and that's how they... That's how they live. Well, in America, when we run out of space in our closet, we go and rent closets at other places. We go into closets in other rooms. We, we, we have somebody in our neighborhood who has an extra house for, for their crafting because they have so much stuff that they, they needed a spare house. I think that's time to stop, right? It's time to stop, right? They write about it. It's iconic. It's less expensive. You don't have to waste all the time and energy. And I want you to see that if you wore the same or similar outfit every day, I want you to hear the inner conversation that creates. Like if you wore the same jeans, the same t-shirt, the same hoodie every day, could you do that for a week? Could you do it for a month? Like, would that create a level of discomfort if you think that people think that you only have one T-shirt, one pair of jeans, and one hoodie, and you wear that over and over and over again? See, I think it's freedom. I absolutely believe it's freedom. Because for most of us, we have made life far more complicated than it needs to be. And when we try to kind of start dialing it back, we worry about what other people are going to think if we stop playing the game that everybody's playing. And I want you to see tonight that simplicity 
in and of itself is spiritual. When you clear the deck, when you get rid of all the confusion and all the chaos and all the absurd excess and move into a simple version of your life, it is actually easier. It's easier that you actually have more time for God. You know, many of us were raised in a belief that said to be happy we have to have more, whatever that is. We have to have more of this, more of that. More. We have to have more. But the real path to happiness isn't addition, it's subtraction. What thought, what belief, what idea, what judgment would you have to let go of to be profoundly happy? And can you see that over and over again, more stuff doesn't feed your soul. It's just stuff. That, that if you wanted to get to peace, it's not about adding more. It's about subtracting worry. If you want to be more successful, subtract self-doubt. If you want to let go of your ego, just let go of the stuff and put God first. Albert Einstein said this, there are three rules of work. Out of clutter... Find simplicity. From discord, find harmony. And in the middle of difficulties, find opportunities. That's it. Like those people who can look through all the clutter and all the stuff and all the noise and all the screaming and can find the simple path. That's where grace is. That's where God is. It's not about adding more confusion to the conversation. It's actually about clearing it all away so that you get to see the most important thing. Oscar Wilde said, I have the simplest of taste. I am always satisfied with the very best. Right? Then we think, well, that's not spiritual. But Jesus wore a seamless robe. Jesus wore a seamless robe. It was actually woven for him. A seamless robe, there's no, hence the name, seamless. There's no seams. So it's woven in one piece for the person who's going to wear it. It's worn in one, it's so it's woven in one piece, and it's like the Armani suit of today. And that's what Jesus was walking around in. Now, did he have a trailer full of them that was pulled behind him so he made sure he always had a fresh one? No, he, he had one seamless robe, and that was his outfit. That was the deal. And I want you to see tonight how many times is your ego making your life more hectic than it needs to be? That what if finding a simple path really became a fundamental step in your spiritual life? That every time your mind wants to make something complicated and needs to look at 14,000 different options instead of just listening to God and doing what you're told. So let me give you some ideas of ways that I believe you can simplify your life. First one, and this one you're going to hate. The, the first one is just declutter your living space. And, and when we've done that here. We, we, we've done the Marie Kondo where we, when we, we did a whole month on Marie Kondo. And, and we had so much stuff that we gave that, that it's just absolutely declutter your life. And it actually frees you to be able to think better, change your priorities, declutter your living space too prioritize the things that are the most important to you. Like, everything can't be equally as important. And when you decide what's really important to you, and you make that a priority, then everything else, now there's a natural hierarchy. There's a natural order that begins to make sense because everything can't be equal. You have to really decide in your life what's the most important thing. How important is your peace of mind? How important is you living a life that's balanced and, and makes sense to you? The third one is, is simplify your schedule. You know, the only way that we have to create a great life, we only get two words to create a great life. And those two words are yes 
and no. That's all we get. We're either going to say yes to something or we're going to say no to it. But that's all we get. And, and that's, when we can't say no, then we get all these things in our life that aren't aligned with our values, that don't make sense to us, but we just don't believe that we can say no to them. So it, it just gets filled with all this time and energy, and it's exhausting simply because we can't say no. So let's say it together. No. One more time. Like we really mean it. No. One more time. Leave me a little stronger. No. Now, if somebody says, well, do you want to go do this? Practice with me. No. Now, do you need to turn the volume up to nine? No. When you're clear about your no, everybody's going to get it. But when you're not clear about your no, and you think, well... I don't want to, but I think I should, right? And then when you don't use your no, it just creates so much chaos that the only two words that you ever get to create everything in your life is yes and no. Practice peace. Pay attention to your thoughts, your emotions, your physical sensations. Practice peace as a process. Limit your screen time. And six, simplify your finances. Okay, I got to tell a story. This year, my wife has put us on a budget. Ask me how excited I was about that. Right? I actually get an allowance now. I haven't had allowance since I was 14. And I got to tell you, it is changing our financial life because what we've learned is I'm a spender. Are any of you spenders? Now, spenders don't usually like to admit that they're spenders because if we're truly a spender, we like to do it quietly while nobody notices, right? But when we simplify our finances, when we actually get ourselves our little allowance, we can actually decide what's the most important to us and it actually makes sense in our life. Seven, spend time in nature because nature feeds your soul. See, I really want you to hear tonight that we have to choose a simple life. Because if, we if we're not conscious about it, if we don't invest in it, there's a hundred million ways that your ego can get you so busy, so exhausted, that you will not know if you're coming or you're going. But when you decide that when you really want to pay the price for a simple life and you begin to use your yes and your no and you begin to choose the values that are the most important to you, you find that a lot of life just falls to the wayside. That so much of what we do, so much of how we invest our time and our energy, how many times we spend our money are things that aren't really adding value in our life because they're not really lining up with our spiritual purpose, why we're on the planet. And I want you to see tonight that you picking a simple life is one of the most powerful spiritual things that you could do. And in the beginning, when you feel like you're life is out of control and you decide to pick a simple life, it's like, I don't even know how to do that. I've lived a life so busy, so crazy. I don't know how to pick a simple life. And then you just start by asking yourself, what do I really want? What do I really value? Do I really want to do this activity? Is this how I really want to spend my time? Is this how I really want to spend my money? Is this in really important to me? Or am I doing this for all the wrong reasons? And over and over again, when you get down to the most important thing, I want you to see that there's this power that steps in. And we call that power grace. And that grace and ease begin to step in and guide you and direct you in a, in a way that your intellect cannot. But grace and ease absolutely knows what your soul needs. 
what is the highest and the best for you. And when you begin to live with grace and ease, when you actually look to God to guide you and direct you, and when you have the courage to actually put that into effect and be obedient to it, and we hate that word, but to be obedient to the activity of God, everything in your life gets better. God is in charge of my life. Will you say that with me? God is in charge of my life. One more time. God is is in charge of my life. And I want you to see that over and over again, there is a simple path. But it's not the path that your mind's going to give you. It's not the path that your ego is going to give you. It's the path that God knows how to give you, but you have to choose it. You have to decide over and over again that I want to live a simple life and be wildly blessed. Because what we don't believe is that if we desire to live a simple life, that we're still going to be wildly blessed. And the truth is, when we simplify, when we let go of all the craziness in our life, and we just get down to the things that are the most important to us, we actually unleash the highest level of blessing that we can't get to in all the confusion. So you ready for your homework? I want you to have a serious look at where the confusion is in your life. Where's the chaos? Where's the madness? Where's the upset? Where are things out of control? And I want you to use your yes and your no, and then I want you to listen to God. I want you to truly ask God to help simplify your life, to get down to the things that are just the very most important things. And then for you to have the courage to say no to everything else. Get down to the very most important things and say no to everything else. And when you get to that sweet spot where you know that you're living the most important thing, I want you to feel how absolutely blessed you feel. That there is a level of good when you take everything else away there's a level of good that is completely soul-satisfying for you that will make a spiritual difference in your life. But we have to choose that. The way that I sometimes look at it is imagine there's a, there's a vein of gold. And in all your life, there's this vein of gold. And when that vein of gold, that, that path that we live with God, when it's the most important thing, and we keep following that little vein of gold, it is so nourishing to our soul. It feeds us so deeply that all the other junk never, ever will. When we follow God, when we follow that little, that little guidance, we feel so deeply blessed. Living a simple life is the simplest thing you will ever do. But it's not easy. Because you have to actually listen to the voice of God that speaks directly to your soul. No one can listen for you. And you need to know how God speaks to you. Does God speak to you in feelings? Do you get visions? Do you hear things? How does God speak to you? And you need to know how God speaks to you. And then you have to have the courage every day to put that guidance into effect. And the first day, it will feel weird. And the 32nd day, it'll feel less weird. And after about three months of every day listening to God and doing what you're told, there'll be a moment where you realize that you're walking in grace and that your life is different. Thank you, God, for a simple life together. Thank you, God, for a simple life. One more time. Thank you, God, for a simple life. Okay, will you pray with me? I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to feel the presence of God. 
And I want you to see if you can feel that little grain of gold, that little vein of gold that runs through your life. That it is the most important thing. It is so bright and shiny that you can see it. You know where it is. But you have to be responsible. And you have to be willing to put that first over and over and over again. That that little vein of pure gold is the activity of God for you. And if you trust it, if you follow it, if you listen to it, if you allow it to guide you, it will lead you into the most amazing life imaginable. But you can't lose it. You can't get distracted. You can't put other things first. That little grain of gold has to be the most important thing. Holy Spirit, show us our path. Show us our little vein of gold. Let us follow it with commitment and dedication. Let us let go of all the distractions that we may live a life of grace and ease. So in all things we look to God, and in all things we give thanks, and so it is. Amen.